Hi, Mike Amison here talking to you about designing and building great web APIs. In this screencast, I'm going to cover a very important topic, shutting down a production API. It's going to happen somewhere along the way. There'll be a time when you have another release, you don't need this one anymore, or maybe your API is no longer viable, it's not used by hardly anybody, or maybe the problem's been solved and you just need to shut this down. At somewhere along the way, you're going to have to close up a production API, and there is a right way to do it. We're going to talk about the five things you're going to need to cover when you shut down your production API. Now first, even as we're thinking about this notion of shutting down a production API, we really have to acknowledge the idea of dependency. When you created your API, you actually invited people to use it, to actually use it to solve their problems. They became dependent on you. You're offering a vital service to them to solve their problem. Now, if you want to shut that down, you're kind of putting them in a lurch. You owe it to them to sort things out. So dependencies uh, acknowledgement is very, very important. It's the key element that actually drives this entire process. And this whole idea of how people depend on APIs is caught, uh, captured really brilliantly by a gentleman by the name of Hiram Wright, who worked at Google. He's got a great line. He says, with a sufficient number of users of an API, it does not matter what you promise in the contract, all observable behaviors of your system will be depended upon by somebody. Even if you think you know how you, who all your users are, there are probably other ones out there somewhere they depend on your API, so you're gonna to need to have to deal with that. So that leads to what we need to do. The first thing is communication. You need to let everybody know you plan to shut down this API. Now, if it's inside an organization, that's pretty easy. You can use email lists, wikis, some other kind of publishing format, and then let people know what is gonna happen. However, uh, it's a little bit different if you're dealing with partners. You've probably got some kind of communication line with partners who are using your API. Finally, you may have a public API or a bunch of users that you've never met. You're gonna to have to figure out how to connect with them. Often it's a forum, something you write in the documentation or something like that. So it's important to communicate and it's important to communicate in a timely manner. You can't tell them you're gonna close it in two weeks. You need to give people months and depending on the complexity of the API and how strong the dependency, you might have to give them as much as a year or more before you close down that API. So that's the first step along the way, communication. Second, if your API actually collects data from people and allows people to use their own data, you're going to need to be able to let them recover their data before you shut the API. Now, if it's a read-write system like a, like a file database or something like that, they, you can just instruct them to go ahead and clean out their portion of it and collect their data. However, if it's a little bit more sophisticated, if it's a database, if it's a complex set of records, you probably need to write a utility to allow them to actually export all of their data. Google Takeout is a great example of this notion of allowing people to recover their data. So you're going to need to handle that. Next, you need to figure out what you're going to do with the API itself. In the best case, you're going to open source that code. You're going to turn that code over to somebody else to mentor and work on it. You're going to have another champion for this API. Um, if you're inside an organization, maybe you can turn that over to another team. Maybe you can actually turn that over to someone else in your own group. If you're in a public situation, you need to find some other person who wants to take that on. If not, the least you can do is actually place that code in open source somewhere so somebody else can pick it up, even if you don't find somebody who can do it. Now, if it's a corporate situation, you may not be able to just open source your code. There may be a lot of intellectual property or other things involved. Then that means what you need to do is you need to put in the public domain or in the Creative Commons the actual interface. So that's the documentation, the diagrams, the description, and the definition files like OpenAPI, Async API, GraphQL, things like that. So it's really important to at least publish the interface. The interface was public anyway. People used to be able to use that interface all the time. There was documentation out there everywhere. You're not saving anything important. If you can't do the code, make sure you can do the interface so that other people can use it. And finally, once you decide to actually shut down the API, you're going to need to actually mark all the resource endpoints as 410 gone. That's the HTTP status code that says, not only is there not a response here, there never will be a response here. And in my APIs, what I do is I actually send a body with that 410 gone message using the, if it's a JSON uh, format, using the problem JSON format that actually has the title, which says this resource doesn't exist. 
uh, explains what happened and where you can go for an alternate source. So where you can find the code, where you can find the interface, at least some help document to help somebody figure out what's going on. These are the cases where people never got the communication or didn't understand the communication or are from a long time ago. They used to have some bookmark on this API. And that's really, really important. This 410 gone needs to be forever. Uh, you can easily just set up a simple app that just responds 410 gone to every single resource request uh, for this particular API. And that's really, really important. That's being a good steward. So that pretty much sums it up. Make sure you communicate and communicate in a timely way. Allow people to recover their data using a utility or some other means. If you can, open source the code so other people can take it on. If you can't open source the code, at least open source or Creative Commons or public domain, the interface, the documentation, the diagrams, the descriptions, the formats, and the other elements. And then finally, once you do shut it down, mark your API as 410 gone for all points with enough information that points to where somebody can find the interface, find the code, or find other alternatives. Those are the steps it takes to properly shut down a production API. Hey, this is Mike here again. If you like what you saw in this uh, screencast, you'll find a lot more in the book Design and Build Great Web APIs from Pragmatic Publishing. Check the bug at the top of the page in the link below and you can find out more about how you can design and build great web APIs.